Hi, this is Mike Fauche, and in today's video, we're going to cover the new Hyperdrive USB 4 SSD enclosure and do a head to head comparison test with the Zyke Drive enclosure that I recently tested. Both of these devices claim to be the fastest USB 40 gigabit enclosure that you can buy, so stick around for the rest of this video if you want to find out if the Hyperdrive is indeed the new Speed King. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like if you find it useful, as it really does help support the channel. A while ago, I did a video review on the Zyke Drive, as they were claiming to be the fastest USB 4 enclosure out there. After reviewing it, I ended up being really impressed with the results. As the Zyke Drive is now attached to my editing system and I use it on a daily basis, the overall performance has been great and I've been really happy with it. I'll post a link to my review of the Zyke Drive if you want to find out more information about it. After posting my review of the Zyke Drive, one of the viewers commented that he was using the Hyperdrive and suggested I take a look at that device as they believed it to be a better choice and they were getting great results from the device. In looking at the website, just like the Zyke Drive, they claim to be the world's fastest 40 gigabit per second USB 4 SSD enclosure which instantly captured my attention. So I went ahead and purchased one so that I could test it out. In terms of pricing, as of this video, both are currently the same price as selling for around $119. Though the $119 was a sale price for the Zyk drive, as the MSRP is normally higher than that, but the Hyperdrive's normal sell price is $119. So let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. You get the product documentation, a cable, two thermal pads, an extra locking clip, and of course the drive enclosure itself. If you look at the enclosure, you'll see that it comes with a silicon cover on the top of it, much like the Sabrent drives. Based on the heat generated from NVMe drives, this cover is most likely there to shield you from the heat, as well as provide a little protection for the drive enclosure itself. You'll actually have to remove this protective cover to be able to remove the lid so that we can install the drive. There's a notch on one end of the enclosure that allows you to pull off the lid to expose the inside. And once the cover is off, you can see the different mounting options for the different size NVMe drives. To keep things consistent and so that I could test each enclosure exactly the same, I'll install the same 2TB Samsung 990 Pro, which is what I currently have installed in the Zyk drive. Installing the SSD is pretty simple. Just insert the drive in the connector and then push the rubber hold down clip onto the notch of the drive and then just push it down to lock it in place. Once the drive is installed you need to apply one of the supplied thermal pads. They actually give you two pads with the enclosure but they're the same size so you can use either one of them. Once you apply the pad just snap the cover back on and you're ready to put the silicon cover back on and use the drive. The test system I'll be using is an M2 Max DDO. As this has four independent Thunderbolt ports I attach the hyperdrive to an empty port and the Zyke drive is currently attached to a dedicated port. I'll run the same performance test that I usually use which is the Blackmagic benchmark and the amorphous disk mark. When it comes to drive benchmarks I find that both of these do a pretty good job at exercising the drives and should provide a good foundation to establish the performance of each drive. First let's look at the Blackmagic test and compare the two enclosures. As you can see from the first benchmark, it's really hard to pick an absolute winner here on this particular test system. Both of these devices have fantastic results and are almost identical in performance in the benchmark. Any minor differences be well within the margin of error. I ran these tests numerous times and they were always neck and neck. I did want to add that both of these results are significantly faster than many other enclosures that I've tested costing either the same or in some cases more. Now let's switch over to the amorphous disk mark. Again we see kind of the same story with both drives being almost identical and both able to deliver excellent performance. As we let this benchmarks complete let's quickly talk about why these are so close and why under these conditions it'll be actually difficult to pick a winner. If we look at the Thunderbolt 4 specs, it states that there's a maximum of 40 gigabits per second of throughput. However, what's not obvious to everyone is that built into that spec is a dedicated 8 gigabits that can only be used for video, really leaving you with around 32 gigabits for, for data. That said, additional bandwidth could be allocated if you're running, say, a 4K or higher display, further reducing the 4 gigabits per second capacity. To add further complications to things, there are also some overhead in the controller, 
So the best that you'll be left with is approximately 22 to 28 gigabits per second for dedicated data throughput, depending on the controller, your system, and the video load. When I convert that into megabytes per second, you end up with a range of around 2750 to 3500 megabytes per second that you should expect from any external storage regardless of what the SSD or enclosure is capable of when using a Thunderbolt 4 controller such as the ones equipped on all the newer Mac units. This limitation would also apply to Windows Thunderbolt controllers as well. Looking at the performance of these two devices and given that they're running off of the same system, it's pretty safe to assume that both of these enclosures have reached the maximum throughput of the system controller and the Thunderbolt bus itself. As we look at the final result, we can see that these perform almost exactly the same, and when it comes to speed, both of these will deliver outstanding performance. You will be happy with either one, as they are both the fastest external storage devices I've tested so far. I've tested many Thunderbolt and USB 4 enclosures costing far more that don't come close to this kind of performance. Both of these drives have excellent construction and you won't be disappointed with either one. The performance of these enclosures rivals and in some cases beats what comes built into many systems, so it's safe to assume that either will do an excellent job for you. Setting aside the hokey Thunderbolt cable that comes with the psych drive, which I really didn't like, both of these are really, really well built and do a pretty good job with heat sinking. And though the Zyke drive has a clear outside layer that does a great job shielding you from the heat, as my Zyke drive is currently mounted on the bottom of my desk, I plan on using the hyperdrive as my portable solution of choice and leave the Zyke drive where it is. Either one you choose, you won't be disappointed when it comes to speed. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, so please leave any questions in the comments section. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.